One thing that we haven't talked a lot about is the after treatment systems or the def on these larger machines. So we're gonna go over a little bit of that today. It's hard to cover every scenario that you might see if you have one of these larger machines with def on it, but we're gonna talk about some common problems, some common codes and messages you might see on your screen while operating your um, equipment. So, you know, you might see a desox pop up. We're gonna talk about what desox is. Um, if you get a tampering fault or um, a, what do we call it, def, Def quality. Def quality sensor. So this one is in here for def quality issue, and we'll talk about that and how we're going to fix it and what we did to test it. But unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do without software on these machines. If you get a tampering code or something like that, you're going to have to have dealer support or you're going to have to have someone with a laptop that can talk to the DCU on this machine. Now, Bobcat only used def on the larger machine, so 75 horsepower and over requires def, and that's only on the 770 and the 870 size machines. Now, some of the Versa handlers also use def on them as well. One thing to note on these engines, the 770 and the 870, we have two different computers. We've got an ECU for the engine, we've got a DCU for the def system. And that's because Delphi did not have an after treatment system, so we have to use Delphi injection system with a Bosch DCU or a dosing controller. Dosing, dosing control unit. Dosing control unit is Bosch. So essentially we have to have two different software. We have to have a software to talk to the engine and we have to have another software to talk to the DCU side of it. So if you get into something like that and you get codes without a computer, there's not much. You can't, you can't disconnect a battery and clear codes. I mean, they're, they're just stuck in there. So Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, it's in memory. So some of the common problems that we see on these machines, again, def quality is what we've got going on with this one. What does that mean? Your def is a mixture of urea and water. deionized water. And that ratio, we got a def quality ratio. That ratio is 32.5. In the ECU, the def sensor in here has a sensor that measures that quality, 32.5% urea and 67.5% water. And if it's outside those numbers, you only got like 0.7 either direction, plus or minus like 0.7 quality, and you're gonna start getting quality codes. Now we tested the def in here with a refractometer, and we are testing okay. You know, even the customer pumped his tank out and he got fresh def in there and we're still getting def quality codes. So what happened is the sensor itself has gone bad. And Bobcat, and it's, it's not really Bobcat, it, it's the Bosch def headers, the sensor that has gone bad and they've since been updated and they're working better now. So let's take a look at what it actually looks like. Here's so this header. is what's gonna go down in the tank. So we've got our sensor, we've got a pump where we actually extract DEF, and then we've got a heater tube here where we run engine coolant through there to help heat the DEF itself. Then right down in here is our DEF tank. So this is what we're gonna have to remove. We're gonna have to pull some lines out and we gotta replace the sensor and some wiring and stuff to get it updated. So we'll go over how to fix that. Um, have you seen any issues on these? Have you had to deal with them much at all? In my experience um, at the dealership, I did not work on very many of them. I did one where I worked, they had issues, it was a 770, and apparently the post and pre nox sensors, um, since they're kind of right next to each other, it was easy for them at the factory to flip them. Mm, that's right. You know they what got, I'm talking about? Yeah, they got plugged in the wrong. Yeah. yeah so the so the, you'd see <laughs> when you plug in the computer, you'd see that your post NOx readings were higher than your pre and it would mm -hmm. throw a quality code or it would be yeah. a NOx code. I, I remember that, yeah. yeah. So um, this system also uses what we call an SCR, selective catalytic Re reduction. Re reduction. Reducer. Catalytic reducer, selective catalytic reducer, right? Something like that. So what happens, we've got a diesel engine that produces NOx, which is ni oxides of nitrogen. And we gotta clean up that because that's what completes the air and causes smog and stuff in the system. So right. what we do is we use a DEF injector. We inject urea into the SCR. It goes through a mixture chamber and it basically reduces or degrades the it's urea. It's a chemical reaction. Yeah. And basically that just... So when you heat urea, it turns into ammonia and ammonia reacts with the catalytic converter inside the SCR and it reduces that NOx, the oxides of nitrogen, basically breaks it down to nitrogen and oxygen. And so that's Water. all that's coming out of 
out of your exhaust. I mean, it's it's pretty clean. It's, you don't yep. smell it or anything really on the exhaust on these. Um, so take me back to another problem that I've seen on these. Has you ever seen that mixture chamber right in front of the yes. DEF nozzle? What happens that mixture chamber is you got a DEF nozzle that comes in and that mixture chamber would come apart and it would slide down the SCR tube and it would rub on the temperature sensor and wear out the temperature sensor. So if you ever have a temperature sensor code and you pull it out, you can actually see some wear on that sensor, then you know you got to replace your whole SCR at that time. Uh, it seems like a lot of that's been caught in the field and fixed, yeah. you know, since then. Um, another problem, if we look back here that we've seen, <clears throat> and, it, and it's kind of hard to see, I'll just kind of point where it is. This is our SCR and this is our DOC, but behind the DOC back up on the SCR is where our DEF injector is. And the way they run the wiring, it, it comes out of the pigtail and up and it's, it's kind of a real tight bend, but it's like a heavier gauge wire. It's not like a fan, fine strand copper. So what happens is it vibrates and it breaks the copper inside the wiring. So if you ever have a code for a DEF injector, like open or, it seems like they were like short to ground codes if I remember right, but it's actually an open circuit. And so what I do is I've got a whole bag of them that I keep on my truck because I've done so many of them. But this is a pigtail for a Duramax injector. And this is a lot finer strand of copper. And what we do is just wrap that with some um, Tessa, some heat resistant tape up there. And then we just use this um, diesel injector, our Duramax injector plug. And that's what we replace on the um, injector, the DEF injector right. itself. So I got a question for you. Okay. Let's say I had one of these and I wanted to, I knew something was wrong. What would I be able to fix without throwing a tampering code? Because I've had people, I've had, I had a machine come in, I think it was a, a oh, what's the? Yeah, 770. Uh, A770. A770. Mm -hmm. And something happened up here, it was coming loose, so they tied some tie wire around it, and they threw a tampering code. Something happened in there. They so, tried to fix it. So what is a tampering code? So the DCU will build codes inside of it. Now, the DCU can only handle up to 10 codes. Once it gets 10 individual separate codes, it locks the system out and it calls a tampering code. Now, whether it was your fault or the customer's fault or whatever, if you go in there messing with stuff, let's say you unplug that DEF injector and it has an open short or the DEF heater, which is down inside here, that's another problem we need to talk about, the DEF heater valve. But all these codes get stored in the DCU and then it throws a code to the ECU that's called tampering and you're locked out. There's nothing you can do. Once you get a tampering code, you have to hook yep. it to the and computer. The problem is if, if you get a tampering code in there, they're going to deny your warranty. That's, that's what happened in my experience. Did they really? Yep. They denied it. So you had to pay for the whole system to replace. And I hate that because a tampering code does not mean you were physically tampering with it. A lot of times I'll see a tampering code when people have low voltage or almost a dead battery, mm. especially in the winter if time. You, if you look in the computer and you get a, a low battery, you'll see a million codes. Yeah, and, and that is enough for the DCU to throw a tampering code simply because the battery's dead, you're trying to start it, and all these sensors are saying, okay, something's not right, low voltage, so low voltage. then it stacks up and then you got a tampering code. So the fact that they denied warranty on that is kind of... I don't know. That's weird, yeah. man. I hate that. But I guess it can happen. Yep. So I that's what a tampering code is. It's just a too many codes in there, whether they're active. Most of them are in history. They're not always active. This one actually had a tampering code when it came in, but the only active code was deaf quality. So we cleared all the rest. Deaf quality stays present, um, an active code, and that's why we got to take care of that. But getting back to this heater valve, and, and you can't see it, I'm just gonna tell you that you got, you got your main drive belt right here, and then right past that, you've got a heater valve, and that's what opens and closes to let coolant flow through that uh, DEF sensor. That, so it that doesn't just, freeze. So it does, yeah, it just keeps it warm. Or when, when it is frozen, which DEF will freeze at 11 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll actually thaw it out. You'll get a code for DEF temperature when you first start your machine, that extreme cold, but once you get the coolant rolling through there, it'll clear that code and let you get back to working but that's gonna to add to the tampering yep. fault. So yep. be careful. You be, yeah, you gotta be careful with that. If you can park them indoors, Still especially when it's really cold, yeah. Yep. But anyways, that valve is straight through there. And a lot of times when you break a drive belt, the drive belt starts slinging and flapping around in there and it grabs that wire and rips the wiring out of the DEF heater valve. And wow. that, that's something else that I've had to fix a lot. So we've talked about 
the heater valve, we talked about how DEF works. We've talked about how the DEF header works, the DEF injector. Can you talk about what a DSOX is? That's right. So DSOX. DSOX is what comes on. You'll see it on your screen. I get asked this all the time is, oh, my machine says, or they'll send me a picture of it. It says this. Well, think of DSOX almost like a regen on any other diesel vehicle, except this is SCR, not DPF. So, yeah, so it's these, a little these bit These don't different. do regens then? It's kind of the same thing, but it works differently, if that okay. makes sense. So regen is more of like a... This is with the DPF. More DPF, and it, it, it almost works the same way. We're getting extremely hot and, you know, doing the, um, injecting more depth and stuff. So we get it up to what, it's a th almost a thousand degrees in it. It's super hot. You can't stand behind the exhaust. Yeah. So on average, depending on run time in the machine, every 200 hours is about the average when these go into a DSOX. So think of as a regen. Don't shut your machine down. Just run it at wide open throttle and let it do its thing. Sorry. <laughs> no, but that's basically what a DSOX is. If you see it on your screen, let the machine run, let it do its thing until that DSOX turns off. And that way, you know, you've got a full DSOX. And, and we can also run that DSOX. And a lot of times when we're testing the injection system or the DEF system, we, we force a force DSOX, it. almost like a forced regen. We, we yeah. put our laptop on Just there. Just to and, get a fresh, clean start. And what's weird is that you would think that if you were to force a regen, remember we got DCU software and ECU software. If you force a DSOX, what software you use? You'd think it'd be in the DCU. You think it would be, right? It's not. But no, no. you got to go into the engine software very strange. to force a DSOX. I remember looking for it for like an hour the first time I tried to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So any of the other Bobcat mechanics here look for it, just remember that the DSOX is under the EOL section of the engine. Of the engine uh, analyzer. V1 engine analyzer, which brings me to V2. So now we got uh, the new V2 engines, the new D34 engines, which is in the S86, T86, and some of the bigger Versa handlers. Like we talked about, we've got an ECU and a DCU on this. Now we've changed from a Delphi system to a Bosch system. So now the new machines have a Bosch injection system. That's so great. now all we have to have is one software. We call it a V2 software. And now we can talk both the engine and the V2 the, software is very, there's a lot of stuff in the yeah, V2 software. It, it's, it's, very it, nice. it's a lot different, but it's the same at the same time. So if you know how to work one, you either have to work the other. It's just getting used to. But now you can talk to both the after treatment and the engine through one software. We'll have two different softwares. So with all that being said, if you have any questions, just let us know on that and we can kind of go over it more in depth. But let's go ahead and get this um, DEF header changed out real quick. And we're going to pump the tank just to make sure that um, everything is good. Although we tested it, it looked good. We're going to put fresh DEF in there. Get this thing started back up. We'll take a look at what the computer says as far as um, the, the new ratio after we get everything cleaned out and see if it's changed. Cool. Okay, so to remove the DEF sensor, you know, the DEF sensor, I've already removed the plate right here. So this is like the control unit. This was what powers and um, takes the information from the header and sends it back to the um, main, the machine controller or the DCU. So I've already just taken this plate off. We're not going to use this anymore because we've got an updated sensor. So our wires are shorter. It's actually supposed to mount on the DEF tank, but we didn't get an updated DEF tank on this one. We're just going to put the new sensor in. It'll still work with the old tank. Now, remember we said that coolant flows through um, the header. So what I do is some hose pinch pliers and we want to pinch off the coolant lines so that when we disconnect them. We just don't drip coolant all over the place. with our hose clamp pliers. What do you call these constant tension, constant tension, constant tension clamp. clamps. We take those off and then we can remove our coolant lines. You can mark these um, in and out if you want to, but it's pretty much one's on the left, one's on the right. It's kind of hard to mix up. It is kind of self-explanatory. No, it looks like someone's been in here before because that one's got a weird cut on it. Hmm. So i just take those lines and set them to the side. Okay, now the actual DEF lines, these little pliers here are for like little push pins, you know, for like the cab, but these work real good to squeeze around because you got, it's basically like buttons, almost like a fuel injection line. 
you gotta squeeze both sides of this fitting. Let me get a close up of that. Yeah, and even even this doesn't always work perfectly, but you squeeze it in, that one pulled right off. Let's see that fitting. Can you see it? So it's got a, so I squeeze the button right there and on the other side, and that's why these pliers work really good. Now they make special pliers for these, but this little Harbor Freight tool usually works really good for me. Now this one's a little more difficult because you got tube lines and stuff in the way. It's causing it. Anyways, now that I got that line out of the way, I can get this last bolt. Okay. Now we do have one plug here. We got a new pigtail, so we're just gonna unplug it right here where it goes to our DCU. This uses canned communication. Controller. Blow off the top of it. Mm -hmm. There we go. There she is in all her glory. Yep. Oh, yep. It smells like good death. That is good stuff. Certified smell test. God. Oh, dang. Drip Not coolant all over me. Spill off camera. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So now we got the def header out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a pump in there. We're gonna pump all this out, put some fresh def in there, and we'll be back when we get ready to put the new one in. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Are you filming? Yep. And then we just reverse that process to put in the new sensor. Just like that. All right. Okay. So the new header's in. New header's in. Sure, dude. Tight as you can. All right, you might have to show me your trick on how you get this thing out. I don't know if I'm being stupid or what. Yeah, whatever truck, maybe I ever get to drive a transport. So what Mike's working on now is some, sometimes the death sensor controller, well, not sometimes, but all of them have a shorter wire to them. So they have custom brackets and stuff, and, but this tank wasn't set up for the new bracket. Technically, we probably should have put the updated tank in it, but we can just relocate the battery here. So that's what Mike's doing is just drilling new holes so we can mount the controller. Put some fresh government juice in there. Government. You want? Know All right. What are we doing here? All right. So now that we got the the def sensor installed, what we got to do is we, we got to update the DCU. But all right, so what's weird is we got to have three different so or three different software, uh, computer software versions to talk to this engine. So we've got the um, service analyzer which I'm in now. So what we do is then, I don't want to show too much of the computer system because if you don't have the computer system, it's not going to do you any good at, at all anyway. So now that we got the new def sensor in there, we got to update it in the DCU. But to get the update file, I got to go into Bobcat Service Analyzer. 
and what I did is I put the engine serial number in. It tells me that the DCU has already been updated, so it's updated. I don't have to do an update on that, but the ECU, the engine control unit, does have an update, so we'll go back up and update that. But right now, what I want to do is we're going to go to the DCU, and we're just going to check the def quality now and see what it looks like to um, just make sure that we're good. So now we're in the data monitoring section of the DCU. So this is where we look at all the parameters that the DCU is monitoring. What do I got here? Tank level is 58% because I just put five gallons in it, so that's about right. So what I want to do is scroll down to the actual def quality ratio right here. So we're at 32.9. So it's just a touch high. That's right where it's supposed to be, right? 30. Yeah, 32.5. Yeah, so plus Almost or minus perfect. either way. So yeah, fresh def in there. It's in it. So that is definitely within spec. So that's what took care of it. You know, the def sensor does take care of it. Or the, the, the quality ratio when the def sensor goes bad, it just doesn't work right. It doesn't read right, I guess. I don't know. But it's not uncommon. I and mean, when we have that issue, and it's not just Bobcat, hell, it's Peter Bill, them, um, Max. Any, anything with an after treatment system. Anything, man. They all have the their issues. They all had their issues. Komatsu, so, Cat. Yeah. And again, so we can't blame Bobcat for that. That's just something that happens. Blame the so, government. So it looks like everything's good here. What we're going to do is just go in and just clear all our codes, make sure everything's clean. We're going to start the machine, test it out. But I know there was a lot to it. We kind of went fast through the after treatment system. But if you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, one night we're going to do a live. Um, yep. We're going to start doing some live events. So you can come on and just ask questions live and we'll try to answer them. You know, we may not be able to answer all your questions, but we'll try it and see how it works. But again, any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.